Welcome to Remembering That You Made Coffee, Four Hours Later. This is Brush Control, Episode 4. And in this episode, it's not so much about brush control as it is about understanding paints once again. In the last episode, we went over the movements of brushes and how that affects the paint as you put it down. And during that video, we placed down a load of underpainting on this specific model. And as you can tell, that this kind of underpainting isn't as precise and clean and smooth as it probably could be. But in this video, I'm going to show you how I use a glaze to smoothen that underpainting down. First of all, let's talk about a glaze. How do we make a glaze? For this, I'm just using Army Painters Air Paint, which is an airbrush based paint, but that doesn't matter as much because I'm going to be thinning the paints anyway. And this is just plain water. And what we're going to do is we're going to add that water to the paint. Or should I say, we're probably going to more add the paint to the water. What we're looking for here is a super, super watery consistency where there is mostly water. And as you can see, as I put this down over something that's clear like my nail, it's almost impossible to see the paint as the paint itself is suspended within the water. So in order to use a glaze, what we're going to need is two things. We're going to need our paints to be thinned and we're going to need a towel to wick off the paint on our brush. So let's work on the back again in order to keep some kind of continuity between these episodes. And what we're gonna do is pick up the paint and wick it off on the towel. There isn't gonna be much paint that's left on the brush, but this is now applying a glaze over the top of the work that we previously did. And with something like this, we wanna take into account what we used and learned in the last few videos. Where we last leave the brush is where the paint is gonna stay. The thing with glazes and tints is that as you add them to the model, you'll notice that it doesn't change too much on the first layer. There is a slight tint to the model as I place it down, but it doesn't change much between the layer that I placed down before and this new layer. That's okay. Patience is gonna be key with something like this. Glazing falls into an advanced technique category, at least for a lot of people, but I don't think it's as advanced as it seems. The main trick with using a glaze is just knowing that obviously you don't want to leave a big pile of your glaze in the corner somewhere, but making sure to thin your paints is the most important part about it all. The trick with it is that what it will do is it puts another layer over the top of the paint. And by doing this, it's almost masking the layers underneath. So sure, we're going to lose some of that highlight area, which is okay because we're trying to get it to go smoother and also bring back some of the deeper blue. I'm not sure if I had mentioned this in a video before, but using white as a highlight usually is not the best idea because it's a desaturated color. It doesn't have any color in it. So painting the model with a white undercoat, using this glaze, I'm able to bring the color back and make the saturation go to where I want the saturation to be. Technically, it's a whole lot more work than if you had to just paint this up in the same manner using the blue and then the next highlight blue and working your way up rather than using a white highlight but this is one way of doing it and one of the easiest ways for me to show you how glazes work on a model specifically like this and as i work through this model you can see how it adds saturation into the model and it already is starting to smooth over some of the blends bearing in mind this is our first layer going down And as you can see, I don't have to be too careful with this layer. This is the nice thing about thin paints. If you thin it down all the way to a glaze or a tint level, you don't have to be as careful going over the top. So this, this way you can build up to the right level of saturation that you were looking for. If you wanted it to be slightly more desaturated, you can keep it like that. But this gives you a lot more control over the final finish. Again, as I said, you don't have to work it this way. You could work it by using the specific color in the same place as the last video. Video, as opposed to putting a glaze over the top in this way I can just show you how the paint works like I said in the last video showing how the paint moves is really difficult if you're only going say from a dark blue to a slightly lighter blue but using a white I can show you a lot easier on the model but also at the same time it's a certain technique that you may not have experimented with yet and it's a pretty great technique for building up volume without worrying about color so you're worried more about the volume and how the light hits the model before you're worried about what the actual color of the model is. And I have seen that a lot of painters will do this with just 
black and gray um, previously I've done this with just black and gray and it's a great way of doing it um, it's really nice to be able to control the volume as I said before volume is just as important as saturation the volume is how much contrast there is between the lights and the dark so essentially the depth of your piece is going to be created by the volume so if you want more depth in your piece you would probably want to start off with black and gray this way it takes your mind off of looking at the colors and only looking at the volume of the piece and once you've built yourself up with the volume you can then come in with glazes and add the color to the piece that you wanted the color to be originally and as you can see i'm adding a couple of layers i'll probably do two to three layers of this depending on where i want to get the level to but you can also see as i add a new layer it smoothens out the layers underneath it the more i add the more smooth those layers appear to become and this is because you're covering up the layers with a sort of almost like a haze over the top and by adding that haze it kind of tricks your eye into seeing something that's a lot smoother this is one of the best things about glazes if you feel like you didn't do the best job in blending your blends on a specific part of a model it's easy for you to come in with the glaze later and start to tidy that up without having to do too much work you don't have to go in and be super careful on your blends you just have to be careful with how you put your glaze over the top and already you can start to see how the model starts to become a lot more smoother granted there's a lot more work to be done around these areas but you can tell just based off of this area here how the gradation between the darkest blue going to the lightest blue is a lot smoother already the important part about this is not to have too much on your brush if you have too much it starts to cross the line between a wash and a glaze essentially a wash and a glaze and a tint are pretty much the same thing it's just because it says wash that you use it slightly differently but it is the same thing really at the end of the day it's just a very watered down pigment and again as you can see it slowly but surely adds a new layer over the top which kind of disguises the sort of gaps between each shade and makes the transition a lot smoother ideally when you're doing a glaze you want to use a brush that would cover most of the part in less strokes ideally it's not going to always work out but if you're doing a much larger module than this you'd probably want to use a much larger brush. Um, I find that the larger the brush, the less brush strokes you may find in your final layer. And as you can see, it's already blended quite a lot of that part for us already. It almost takes quite a lot of the hard work of blending out so you don't have to spend as much time blending you just spend a little bit more time on glazing model afterwards and you can get a really really great gradient between light and dark without too much effort to be honest and as i'm going along you'll notice that i'm leaving out the slightly whitened edges just so that i'm slowly but surely going smaller and smaller with the layer so the ideal color for this armor would be the specific blue that we have out but of course if we just painted it solid blue it wouldn't be very interesting to look at and using this technique is a really good way of building yourself up without having to do too much guesswork with what colors you're going to use where and now that the gradation looks a little bit smoother we can start to go on to the next steps for the next part of these videos so you can use a glaze as well to start adding back in some highlights if you wanted to add in a few more highlights and like i said because it's such a thin layer of paint the gradation between it and the paint before will settle in so well that you won't even notice the blend between the two and get the smoothest of gradients layer by layer by layer the more you add layers the smoother essentially it will end up becoming so i know that that wasn't the most groundbreaking of news or information to you but some people out there may have never heard of a glaze or how to use it on a specific model particularly knowing when to use it or when is a good time to use a glaze that glaze is the same glaze that i use when i do skin tones and i paint them by hand so if i was going to make a skin tone glaze i would mix up grimoire purple with a load of water and i would gently glaze that into the areas that i wanted to have a little bit more life 
or a little bit more richness in the shadows on a face sculpt for example. So knowing how to use the glaze is very important. It's very important that you wick all of the paint off before you place that glaze or that paint down onto the model. It's going to look like nothing is happening until at least three or four layers in. That is the point of a glaze, is to help you build up to an area of color without putting down too much color over the top of the model. It's a very long way of painting, but a very accurate and really good way of creating the detail that you want without making too many mistakes along the way. However, the only drawback is time because obviously you're painting the same part over and over and over and over and over again. Some artists really don't like glazes. Some artists really enjoy glazes. Everybody's gonna have their own way of using it. Of course, with all of this stuff, nothing is the right or the wrong way. The best way is what works best for you. And by you doing research and watching videos on how other people use the paints to paint, this is going to be the best way for you to make up your own mind and use those techniques or change and modify those techniques to work best for you. Right now, I'd like to put in the good word for thanking the patrons who help keep the lights on and make sure that these videos are still made every single week. There is a link for Patreon in the description below and this will give you access to our private Discord where you will be able to join the community of amazing painters that are already involved in that community. If you found any of the information in this video useful, make sure to leave a like. If you think I'm an idiot, leave that in the comments. At the same time as, if you didn't like the video, you probably want to click dislike and just fuck off. You know when you're painting a model and you're at the ugly stage, but you're trying to convince somebody that this is the way to do it?